Welcome to the City Council meeting for January 10th, 2011. I'd call the meeting to order and ask everyone to uh, join me in singing our national anthem. Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to Mr. Dave Bray for his musical rendition of our anthem. I'd call for the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that the minutes of the City Council meeting held December 13th, 2010 be adopted. Thank you very much. You've all heard the motion. Were there any errors or omissions in those minutes? Seeing none, we'll call for the votes. Thank you. And that motion carries. I uh, look for a motion for the adoption of the agenda. And Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council adopt the agenda as presented with the addition of 8.3 Library Board Bylaw and 8.4 Public Board Public Member Appointments. Thank you very much. And so we have a motion for the adoption of the agenda with those two additions. Are there any other additions or changes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, that brings us to number five, uh, delegations. And this is an opportunity for any member of the public to come forward to address City Council on any public issue. Um, it's an opportunity to speak to Council and uh, the first opportunity of the new year. So I'd call uh, once to see if there's anybody that would like to come forward to speak to Council. And seeing nobody rushing to the table, um, we'll move on to the next uh, item on our agenda, public hearings, of which there are none, unfinished, unfinished business, which there's none, and finally, uh, reports. And item 8.1, bylaw C, 1064F, to amend the business license bylaw. And um, Councillor Radburn, would you like to bring this one forward? Thank you, Mary Gowen. Um, if I could... Um, uh, what, what the background is you've read in your package from Audrey is that there was uh, an administrative error last time when we passed uh, the three readings of uh, this uh, business license bylaw. Um, unfortunately, the copy that got in the package wasn't, uh, wasn't the same as what was forwarded on from Protective Services. So where I'm, I'd like to uh, just share um, what was left out and then uh, ask, uh, try to, to give the bylaw three readings once again so that we have it officially and formally sure. so we can proceed. So um, the four things uh, that uh, weren't in, uh, that should have been, were one, uh, uh, just the change of the uh, uh, quite to quiet in, uh, we had provide a quiet atmosphere instead of a quiet atmosphere, so that was just a typo. And the other were, uh, we've uh, also there's uh, inclusion in the bylaw where taxi broker is required to produce the log and fails to do so as required. The taxi broker is guilty of an offense, so that it wasn't in, it should have been. A person, who, and secondly, a person who knowingly falsifies or enters false information to a log required in this subsection, subsection is guilty of an offense. 
And finally, the peace officer may enter in a facility or vehicle and inspect records for the purpose of determining whether a taxi broker or chauffeur have complied with this subsection. So those are just uh, three that were administratively omitted that were part of uh, the recommendation from the Protective Services Committee and it kind of, uh, yeah, I think we need to have it to strengthen uh, our wherewithal in terms of uh, enforcing this bylaw. Okay. Thank Thanks you. So much. could I, Please. saying that, could I, uh, uh, move uh, first reading of business uh, license bylaw C 1064 F. Okay, thank you very much. So we have a motion for first reading. Um, I would call for the votes. Thank you. And that motion carries. Please carry on, Councillor Evans. I'd like to move second reading of bylaw C 1064 F to amend the business license bylaw. Thank you. So we have a motion for second reading. Any discussion or debate on the motion as presented or the amendments that are contained? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Thank you. That carries. Please carry on. Councillor Robin. Thank you. I'd move that we have third reading of bylaw C1064F. Thank you. So this is a motion to have third reading of the bylaw uh, here tonight. This motion must carry unanimously. unanimously. And uh, there is no debate. Call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries, and so we can have third reading tonight. So okay. finally, I would move third reading uh, bylaw C1064F to amend the business license bylaw. Thank you very much. And so motion uh, third reading, and we'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that carries. Thank you very much. So that brings us to item 8.2, bylaw C1100-163 to amend the land use bylaw. And uh, Frank, can we have an introduction? Thank you, Mayor Given. The intent of this amendment is to uh, provide opportunities within the city for the development of wind energy conversion systems that would be located in the uh, business industrial and general industrial areas. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, Councillor Rice, would you like to make a motion on this? Yes, I would move uh, first reading of bylaw C1100163. Okay, thank you very much. So we have a motion for first reading. Uh, we'll call for the vote. And that motion passes. Councilor Rice? I would move that council establish Monday, February 7, 2011 at 7 p.m. in council chambers as a date, time, and location for public hearing purposes for bylaw C1100163. Thank you very much. This motion is debatable to the date, time, and location. Uh, is there any discussion or debate on date, time, or location? Seeing none, then I call for the vote. And that motion does carry. So that brings us to the first of our uh, additional items, item 8.3, uh, library bylaw C6651F. And uh, Councillor O'Toole, would you ring in for us there in the queue? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a motion uh, that uh, Council give first reading to bylaw C651F. Thank you very much. I uh, wonder if uh, we could get a quick introduction from administration on what the content of this bylaw amendment is. Um, Jeanette, could you maybe do that for us? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this uh, bylaw amendment is for the purposes of increasing uh, membership on the library board. Uh, the library board currently uh, compri is comprised of nine members, nine members, and um, this bylaw proposes an increase to 10 members. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and uh, I'll note that uh, this came forward out of council's uh, um, concern about uh, ha having the ability to make additional public appointments to the, uh, to the board. And uh, so administration drafted this bylaw, uh, which is much appreciated. So we have a motion uh, for first reading of bylaw C six. 51F. Uh, any discussion or debate? We'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Tool, would you carry on for second? I uh, move that council give second reading to the bylaw 
C-651F. Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Thank you, that carries. And uh, if we wish, a motion to have third reading. Council O'Toole. I'd like to move council have a third reading of bylaw C-651F at this meeting. Thank you. Uh, there's no discussion or debate. We'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries, so we can have third reading of the bylaw here tonight. Council O'Toole. I move the county count or the council give Whoa. third reading. Whoa. <laughs> It was a spelling mistake on the... <laughs> <laughs> I move the council give third reading to bylaw C-651F. Thank you very much, City Councilor O'Toole. <laughs> we'll call for... The no, <laughs> don't do that. We'll, we'll call for the vote. <clears throat> Thank you, and that motion carries. So moving on to item 8.4, uh, public member appointments. Uh, Councillor Gustafson, would you care to handle that business? Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Given. <clears throat> I'll move that Council approve appointments to the boards and committees as follows. Uh, Arts and Development Committee, Wade Fleming, be appointed to the Arts and Development Committee for a three-year term ending December 31st. Fletcher Boodle and Barb Dixon be appointed to the Assessment Review Board for a three-year term ending December 31st, 2013. Darren Metzelmar, Mike Rizzo, and Robert Pape be appointed to the Combative Sports Commission for a three-year term ending December 31st, 2013. Walter Androff and Casey Hines be appointed to the Environment Committee for three-year terms ending December 31st, 2013. Uh, on the airport commission, I uh, move that Clyde Blackburn be appointed for three years and Bob Hall be appointed for one year terms ending December 31st, 2013. <clears throat> Maura Good, Susan, Grand, Susan Bansgrove be appointed to the library board for a three year term ending December 31st, 2013. And Councillor L. Vandermark from the MD of Greenview be appointed to the library board for a two year term ending December 31st, 2012. I move that Ryan Blay and Kelly Culture be appointed to the Pursuant of Excellent Committee for three year terms ending December 31st, 2013. Melissa Menard and Sylvain Rose Deccant, Lynn Culture be appointed to the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board for three year term ending December 31st, 2013. And finally, Aaron Steidel and Amy Cote be appointed to the Take Part, Take Pride Committee for two year terms ending December 31st, 2012. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Gustafson. Uh, just for the public's information, uh, these committee appointments, uh, Council uh, had intended to do them late in uh, 2010. Uh, due to a technical difficulty, we had to carry it over to uh, this meeting. Um, and in fact, it was uh, why we're a little bit late in starting today. Uh, we actually had 35 applications for just 17 open positions. Uh, that council could fill. We were able to increase that uh, by one by adding an extra member to the library board so that 18 public members will be able to serve on City of Grand Prairie committees. Uh, I think it's an excellent uh, result to see this many people interested in, in taking part in our community uh, through serving on a city committee. And I'd thank council members for uh, working so diligently to try and get through the list. It's always difficult when we have to make decisions like this. Um, but I would like to thank council members for their work and I'd like to thank all those who applied uh, and put their names forward for service to their community. So we have that motion uh, covering all the different committees. Uh, was there any discussion or debate? Okay. Seeing none, I'd call for the vote. Thank you and that motion carries. Okay, so we can move on from there to committee business and the first committee up is 9.1 100th anniversary committee. I believe that's uh, Councillor Rice. If you just ring into the queue there, or request oh, to speak. I just did. Okay, I just turned my mic on. I move that Council receive the minutes of the 100th anniversary committee meeting held December 8, 2010. <laughs> It'll take a couple meetings. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. We have a motion for this. Any errors or omissions in those 
minutes. Seeing nothing coming forward, we call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councilor Rice? Speaking uh, to uh, that, I just want to say how exciting it, it is. Uh, you know, we're getting an early enough start, and already the ideas are very exciting and promise. The committee has made a, a, a firm commitment um, of uh, stressing the importance of inviting the whole community to participate in the anniversary celebration. So we look forward to some exciting things coming out of that committee. Um, secondly, I would move that Council approve that the expansion and revitalization of Muscacipi Park be the capital legacy project for the 2014 100th anniversary celebration. Okay, thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Let's see, Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. So, is this? So, what does this mean? It this means that depending upon the monies we receive, then we tailor, or then we consider what specific project relative to the park. What does it mean? Yeah, absolutely. When we're doing our planning, we'll be looking at grant applications, things like that, and and so in order to have a focus, uh, this is why we have recommended that this be our focus. Muscacipi Park is a, a jewel that runs right through the heart of our community. Um, that is open for everyone to enjoy. Good. I certainly support that. Okay, thanks very much. I see Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Yeah, the question I had for Councillor Rice is uh, I'm just wondering, like, if it's something for a legacy to do and it'd be nice, and and I just want to know the final cost, which we're going to be looking at, because this could be, I heard about dredging uh, the outdoor there, uh, expanding on this pavilion. So when the final cost, we'll be looking at the three year, but we're going to be 160 million in debt. We might have a legacy of reducing that. So I just thought I'd bring that up. <coughs> no, no, no funds are being committed. <coughs> Excuse me, no funds are being committed. Um, the project will, as we apply for grants to do certain projects and that type of thing, but certainly there isn't, um, we don't envision at this time a commitment from the city. Well, and, and uh, yeah, certainly this motion uh, really just lays the groundwork for administration to start the planning, and then it'll be up to council uh, through our budgeting process to choose what scale or what scope of projects we would or wouldn't support. And so uh, this really starts that so that we can figure out uh, what might work and start to get some preliminary costs. And then ultimately it wouldn't be until the next budget discussions uh, next fall for the 2012 to 14 budget term where we would uh, ultimately do the decision about what a council would or wouldn't support. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other discussion or debate? We'll just see. one, just one more. Way. The committee also decided um, and requested that the mayor uh, send a letter to the county of Grand Prairie asking them to sit on this committee. It was felt that this is an important enough event that it should be a regional event. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Uh, brings us to, was there anything else from that meeting, Councilor Rice? Uh, just that we will be submitting an application to become the 2014 Cultural Capital of Canada. So again, that, that would be rather um, exciting. Thank you. Um, item 9.2, Council Committee of the Whole. Councilor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council receive the minutes of the Council Committee of the Whole meeting held December 13th, 2010. Uh, for the public, this uh, meeting was our, uh, uh, at this meeting we received a multiplex update. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, I'd call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Um, item 9.3, Public Works Committee. Councillor Wong. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that Council receive the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held December 14th, 2010. Thank you very much. Any discussion on those minutes, errors or omissions? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. And that motion carries. Please, Councillor Wong, carry on. 
I move that Council approve the request to extend the period for subdivision approval and endorsement for subdivision application Z 2008-0020, lots 3 and 4, Plan 1735 TR, for one year to expire on November 24th, 2011. And if I could just follow up with a few comments there, Mayor Gibbon. Please do. Subdivision applications are approved for a one-year time period and can be extended by the subdivision approval authority for an additional year, which, this, which has already been done. Uh, the application must then come to Council for any additional time extensions. So in light of the economic conditions in the past three years, administration and the Public Works Committee felt that uh, recommending an approval for an additional year would be appropriate and that uh, no other plans, uh, that being uh, our municipal development plan or anything else, would suffer from allowing this extension. Okay, thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing no one ring in, we'll call for the vote. Thank you. Well, is there anything further from that Public Works Committee, Councillor Wong? I guess there's a couple points of interest here. Um, we asked administration to energize some lights uh, down one street of West Point where there hasn't been any development yet, but for safety reasons, uh, we asked them to energize those during the winter months uh, because it does get dark and residents are using it as a pass through to Pinnacle, or yeah, to the Pinnacle subdivision. Uh, the other thing that we discussed at that meeting was uh, oh, the uh, 124th Ave from 100th Street to 101st Street. Uh, we asked our administration to talk with the residents and negotiate a split on the local improvement to possibly pave that road. Uh, that was something that came to council at one time, and um, we couldn't come up with a with a with a deal at that time. But now the residents have, or the the businesses have come to us and said we would be willing to offer this kind of deal. So we're trying to see whether or not that's going to work, and they're. We recognize that there are several areas of the city that might have small patches of pavement that could use uh, finishing off, and those are those little chunks that never get done and probably will continue to be missed in our budget unless we, we recognize them and start addressing them. Okay. Um, I see a couple other people in the queue. Uh, Councillor Rice, do you have a uh, question or comment? Uh, Councillor Wong, I, I know that um, you received a verbal report from uh, Mr. Hinton, uh, the transportation engineering supervisor, um, regarding the uh, concerns that had been expressed by the uh, businesses fronting in the westbound traffic lane on 68th Avenue. And I'm not sure if this goes to you or to administration, but there was a referral from General Government Services. Does the report go back to General Government Services? Have those businesses been, uh, you know, were they notified that was going to be discussed at Public Works? I, I'm not, I just want a, a bit of an overview of the process. Sure, Councillor Wong. Um, Councillor Wong, actually, just yeah, turn yourself the mic on then. I'd, I'd ask for administration to help with that and answer. Okay. Uh, so maybe Mr. Descavich uh, from the Public Works perspective, or maybe um, Ms. Ferguson uh, from the overall which committee gets what perspective, who'd like to comment yeah. on that? <laughs> we'll, let, we'll let Mr. Descavich start. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We would certainly ensure that the uh, originating committee got notified as to what our actions were. Councillor Wong. And if I may, Mayor Gibbon, the decision of the of the committee was that uh, what we heard from Mr. Hinton was the the twinning of the road and the access um, was already in our transportation master plan. So the plans were already there for that to to always be a right in access, a right in right out access for uh, for the businesses at that South 68th Plaza. So the fact that people are now turning illegally down the uh, making a left turn out of there um, is something that we're going to have to address as an, uh, an enforcement issue. But in terms of uh, an engineering perspective, that road is doing what it's designed to do. And that plan has been in place for many, many years. I, Council Rice? I, yeah, I, I think the concern expressed at GGS was um, the business interruption during the construction period and and I'm not sure I've heard that addressed and and I haven't had the question answered as to whether 
those business owners who attended at the general government services meeting were notified that this would also be discussed with a report from the engineering services supervisor at that meeting. So just uh, maybe to clarify on the two issues, there is uh, still an outstanding motion from general government services, if my memory serves, uh, that administration will bring back information about uh, okay. about that about the tax, about the money portion. Okay. Uh, so that's the one issue. Um, the separate issue of whether those residents, those business owners, were notified about the meeting of public works addressing the technical road issue is a, is a separate question. So, okay. Okay. and uh, and uh, yeah. Okay, so is there any further discussion or, or debate on That's this? Right. Oh, I see Councillor Radburn in the queue. Thank you, Mayor Gowen. Just to uh, Dana and, uh, and other members of council, uh, with respect to the paving of 124th Avenue from 101 Street to 100 Street, I do think the next step wasn't to negotiate with the businesses there. The next step was to review the design and look at proposed costs and bring that back, back to, to committee. And then I believe committee will decide what to do next. But I think the initial motion, I thought the intent was to gather that information or update that information. Yeah, I, I believe you're right, okay. Councillor Radburn. Sorry, it's okay. been about a month since that meeting occurred. <laughs> Fair, mm -hmm. fair enough, and, and mm -hmm. so yeah, I think there was a perception that uh, mm -hmm. the cost may have been less than the last time the local improvement was proposed, and so we asked administration to update those costs, and, and then council would choose what step would be next. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, thank you very much for those. Um, I th think that was everything from uh, Public Works, and but Combative Sports, Councillor Wong, I believe, is yours as well. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that Council receive the minutes of the Combative Sports Commission meeting held December 14th, 2010. Thank you. Any errors or omissions in those minutes? I'm seeing no one ringing in, I'll call for the vote. And that motion carries. Councillor Wong, was there anything you wanted to highlight from that meeting? No, thank you, but I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions for Councillor Wong? I see Councillor Rice in the queue. I note that you did um, uh, revoke one license as the terms of the contract were breached and the contract was not con concluded as per the time frame. Um, would this be unusual in that business or? Councillor Wong? Well, there are, there are certain processes that occur when we when we take in applications and the applicant was well aware of the deadlines and this, the revoking of our license here, I don't know whether or not it is a common thing or not, but the, uh, the reason why we revoked it was the contract was supposed to be in place with the Crystal Center. The Crystal Center is a separate entity from, um, from the city and at the time of the meeting, we were told by the Crystal Center that a contract, a valid contract was not in place. So at that time, it was already three weeks past the conditional approval uh, deadline. And the committee felt that uh, rather than trying to rush an, an event through, that it was best just to revoke this license and stop the event from happening because really we were two months out. And by the time we could have another meeting, we would be, it would, our, our next meeting is actually tomorrow. The, the applicant has made an appeal on the decision. So we're gonna hear the appeal, but at this point, we're about 31 days away from when they plan to hold the event. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that context, Councillor Wong. Um, I believe the next actually is General Government Services, and that would be Councillor Rice. Councillor Rice, do you wanna? Certainly, I move that Council receive the minutes of the General Government Services Committee meeting of December 15, 2010. Thank you very much. Any errors or omissions in those minutes? Seeing nothing, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Please carry on, Council. I would move that Council receive the Grand Prairie Regional Airport 2011 business plan for information. And I would ask the chairman of the Grand Prairie Airport Commission, uh, Councillor Radburn, if he has anything he wishes to highlight uh, from that uh, business plan. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Councillor Radburn, please. Thank you, be pleased to just highlight a couple things. Um, we're planning on a small uh, operating surplus uh, this year. Uh, revenues and expenditures are 
up about, are projected to be up about five, just over 5%. Uh, most of the fees are remaining unchanged, although we are increasing the airport improvement fee to, uh, I guess, um, to help us with looking for the future and expansion of our, um, of our runway. Uh, that fee still will be well situated relative to other airports in, in Alberta. Uh, and we are looking at additional service routes for 2011. We're working with carriers to look at the possibilities of uh, uh, direct flights to Toronto and direct flights to uh, Vancouver. Um, so we'll continue uh, working on those and maybe even at some point seasonally to Las Vegas. But uh, that, um, I think that gives you a bit of some of the, the highlights. Okay, thanks Thank you. very much. So we have uh, Councillor Rice's motion uh, to receive the airport business plan for information. Um, and just to speak to this, the airport business plan, if it's fully funded, uh, Council receives it for information. Um, if it's not fully funded or there's borrowing that's needed, then Council would actually approve the business plan uh, because the airport's financials are integrated with the city's financials. So just an item of note, was there any further discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Councilor Rice? I move that uh, Council receive the 2010 tax sale report for information, and in speaking to it, a tax sale was held November 26th. There were three properties offered for sale with no bids. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Councilor Rice? I move, <clears throat> I move that Council approve that the Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Association 2011 lease costs for space at Centre 2000 be, play, be paid directly by the City to Centre 2000. Speaking to that prior to this, um, we have given the Tourism Association a grant that is equal to the amount of the rent they pay plus our membership fee, which is based on a per capita um, for marketing. Um, it was felt that we no longer needed to do the circuitous route and we would just pay the rent in essence to ourselves. So it just makes the process a little more efficient and cleaner. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any uh, discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, and uh, just to clarify, though, there is actually no budget impact. Uh, this no budget impact at all, no. Okay. Thank you very much. So we'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Okay. Councillor Radburn, you had a question? Yeah, I just, no question. Just to add to that, uh, I believe the another part of the motion or a different motion was that we're, we're looking at separating contracts your contract relative to the visitor information service and contract relative to the destination marketing that Helen referred to in terms of the per capita. So uh, administration is working on those contracts and they will be brought back to committee for, for our review and then, and then to council. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Rice, could you just uh, ring in again? Oh, there you go. I'm on. Yeah. I move that uh, council receive the assessment notice audit report for information. Okay, thanks very much. And this is uh, this is a report regarding an assessment audit for municipality with municipalities within the province. It's conducted by Alberta Municipal Affairs Assessment Services Branch, and um, I I I don't think I'm being too brief when I say basically what it says is we do everything right. Is that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> our, friend, our corporate <laughs> services director says yes, that's true. And uh, um, just additionally, I think uh, the report also mentioned that uh, Municipal Affairs uses uh, the City of Grand for example, as a template for other municipalities to follow. In fact, we do it so well. So, um, was there any further discussion or debate on that motion? No. Thank you. We'll call for the vote. That motion carries, and Councillor Rice. Then I we'll move the that uh, Council receive the York Hotel final report for information. Okay, thank you. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I'd uh, call for the vote. Thank 
Thank you. And that motion carries. Councilor Rice, is there anything else that you wanted to highlight from that meeting? I just would point out in the York Hotel final report, uh, um, in, in noting that the environmental reports indicate that the site has not been impacted by contamination. So that was good news. Certainly significant. Okay, thank you. Uh, I believe Pursuit of Excellence is next, and Councilor Gustafson. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move the council to receive the minutes of the Pursuant of Excellent Committee meeting held December 15th, 2010. Thank you very much. Any uh, discussion on those minutes? Errors or omissions? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that carries. Uh, Councilor Gustafson, was there anything you wanted to highlight from that meeting? Yes, uh, just a couple highlights from 2010. Uh, there was there was over 40, 40 applicants were funded uh, last year to the uh, sum of uh, $30,584 was given out. Um, of these athletes, there's 11 different sports were given funding. Four sport organizations also received some funding. And if you would uh, care to get some funding, you can contact Kristen Meyer from the community. She's our community recreation supervisor at the city here or check out our website. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Certainly a good news story, uh, the work that the committee does, and we appreciate that. Um, if there's nothing else from those minutes, then our next item would be correspondence, of which there is none, uh, delegation business, of which we had no delegations, notices of motion, there were none, and then finally, council member reports, and I believe we had only one of those, and Councillor O'Toole, you had an update from the River of Death and Discovery Dinosaur Museum Society. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just got an update here. We just had a meeting here earlier this week, and uh, or last week, and uh, I just want to promote a little bit. We're having uh, Dan Aykroyd and his wife, Donna Dixon Aykroyd, will be coming to Grand Prairie along with a bunch of their friends, and we're talking some international celebrities. They will be coming to Grand Prairie July 23rd of this summer and they'll be involved in a dino dig, so they'll be actually partaking into uh, uh, the Pipestone uh, dinosaur beds. And uh, that's a, a nutshell. Uh, it's gonna be, there's gonna be a, a big event, uh, and it'll be at the Crystal Center. It'll be a dino ball, if you wanna call it that. That's what we're calling it. Uh, and there will be uh, tables of uh, celebrities and uh, it'll be a fundraising event. Okay. So, Thanks very much for the update. I'm sure there's going to be lots of information uh, coming about that over the coming weeks and months. I appreciate the update for Council. Um, that was uh, Council Member Reports and Councillor O'Toole if uh, you wanted to start with Council Roundtable. Yeah, uh, sure. Okay, uh, on the December 14th, I attended a meeting and presentation uh, with uh, Waste to Energy Canada. This was held at the Aquaterra landfill site. Uh, it just basically, they were promoting and presenting some different options for uh, getting rid of some of the uh, debris that would be in the landfill. Uh, it was just strictly a presentation. Uh, shortly after that, I attended the library board meeting. On the 15th, I attended the Pursuit of Excellent board meeting and also uh, attended the BDC open house. Uh, and that was a very well attended uh, open house. On the 21st, uh, we joined uh, Joint City and County Council meeting. And on the 22nd, I had an, uh, attended uh, with uh, open house with Wayne Drysdale, our MP MLA. And on the 6th, I attended the Alberta party uh, with acting leader Sue Huff. This was held in the uh, city uh, boardroom here. And uh, just she was going over some of the stuff that uh, she would like to see or us would like to see in a new party if that was a possibility. And some of our concerns uh, with uh, the government and the province. And I also attended later on that day there, the River of Death and Discovery Museum, River of Death and Discovery Museum Board. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Radburn. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, December 14th, uh, attend the youth uh, 
Council official unveiling of Beyond Faces, a 2011 Youth Diversity Calendar Project, and just wanted to, uh, we received actually a copy uh, the day before at council meeting, but it was nice to have their official opening and unveiling, and it was uh, well attended and had the opportunity to uh, share kudos with uh, more of the group that were involved in the project. Also had a tenor opening on the 14th, the 15th, I also attended the BDC Christmas Open House, and the SCORES Christmas Supper and Discussion. Actually, uh, we had a number of uh, uh, representatives from the college and the two school, school districts and the city, and actually the, the discussion was quite good in terms of the future and how we can continue to work together. Uh, December 16th, Airport Commission had Christmas lunch. Um, uh, 21st, Joint City County meeting, and the 22nd, the uh, Holiday Open House with L our MLA. Uh, January 4th was our second Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, we looked at uh, helping Brian look at uh, prioritizing the 11 goals, uh, not fully, but uh, to uh, look at the maybe uh, three that uh, he should uh, look at. Um, and future meetings, we're going to look at the business visitation program report and how those recommendations would mess, mesh with, mess, maybe mess with our plan, but mesh with our plan too. And uh, also look at um, maybe uh, adding uh, some goals to our plan. So uh, very useful. The, the three that uh, most people talked about were the ensuring the cost of doing business in our, uh, in our area is competitive, uh, ensuring that City of Grand Prairie and Partners practices uh, and processes are business friendly and capitalizing and expanding on existing transportation infrastructure were three that were identified as a, a particular interest to the committee. So Brian, we're gonna work with Brian in terms of actions. Uh, he's gonna do some work and some thinking about it and then we're going to give him some advice in terms of how to proceed uh, with some actions relative to those uh, priorities. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Redburn. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Given. On December 16th, I attended the annual airport uh, Christmas luncheon. And on December, 30, December 21st, I attended the county city joint council meeting. Uh, sometime last year, towards the end of the year, I attended at the college an, an introduction to foresight seminar with Dr. Axel Mizan and Dr. Lois Macklin. Um, this is very interesting out-of-the-box, open-minded uh, exercise. Uh, foresight is the process of developing a range of views of possible ways in which the future could develop and understanding these sufficiently well to be able to decide what decisions can be taken today to create the best possible tomorrow. In other words, if you knew what was going to happen in 20 years, it would definitely affect the way you're going to make a decision today. So it was very interesting to try to predict the future. And also I attended uh, our MLA, Mr. Wayne Drysdale's, the Honorable Wayne Drysdale's annual Christmas luncheon at the curling rink. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Crokin. Thanks very good. I uh, attended the uh, BDC Open House uh, on the 20th and had a really good discussion with the uh, one of the major partners from Calgary saying that the, uh, the economic outlook for the Grand Prairie area is uh, definitely on the upswing, not as much as we'd like, but it's really good news from him. Uh, December 21st, I also attended with the uh, other members of council, the meeting with the County of Grand Prairie, ongoing discussions. Uh, on the 22nd, I also attended the uh, MLA Wayne Drysdale's open house. Uh, on the 23rd, uh, as a member of Friends of the Grand Spirit Foundation, I was invited to Wild Rose Villa and the Manor Luncheon, and there was singing and festivities, and uh, Wayne Drysdale was there also. Um, again, I, I met on uh, January 6th uh, in council chambers here, or in the meeting room, with Sue Huff, the acting leader of the Alberta Party, they had some interesting information. I'd like to... Uh, offer, and that was it as far as that, but I just have a couple of quick comments. I'd like to offer congratulations to, uh, to Frank and uh, him to pass that on to his staff. I have had more comments of what a good job our staff is doing in removing the snow. And uh, I would just want him to make sure he passes that on. They're doing a very good job. Um, I'd like to also, uh, could I get a price on, have administration get a price for a 
metal detector for the front door. It's just something that's uh, come across my uh, my information that uh, it would be it would be inf it would be good information to know if uh, we could have a metal detector at our door. You could uh, we could refer that to committee. Um, could I? Probably protective services maybe would be the best one for that. And yep. uh, please. Okay. Okay, we'll refer that issue to protect the Thanks, and that's Thank everything. You. Thank you, uh, Worship. Councillor Rice. Mayor. Can't have a mental detector unless you got somebody there to monitor it. <laughs> Anyways, I just started. Not yes. you. <laughs> it's, gone to, it's gone to administration. I attended the city county meeting, an excellent meeting, uh, Mayor Given. Uh, I uh, met with uh, Wayne Drysdale, our MLA. Uh, discussing how some of the uh, down downsizing in the Alberta Arts Foundation grants have affected us here, particularly in the north. Um, I attended an Alberta Urban Municipalities Association board meeting and um, was uh, appointed to the Safe and Healthy Communities Committee, as well as back on municipal excellence and back on the Alberta Recycling Management Association, Local Authorities Pension Plan, and the Apex Overcap Pension Plan. I appeared on Alberta Prime Time um, talking about the uh, uh, the proposed uh, increase in provincial standards for the safety of firefighters. Um, and I, uh, Councillor Radburn, if you could pass on the information, the background paper I received from um, Deputy Chief uh, Janine Blackburn was outstanding information. Um, also, um, I guess a real source of pride um, when you see how aggressively Grand Prairie has moved to implement the recommendations of, from the province's 2008 upgrading of the standards, Grand Prairie is extremely far ahead of the majority of other even mid-sized cities in terms of the forming of a task force and and the development um, of a protocol. So uh, congratulations to the fire department and, and again a huge note of appreciation to Deputy Chief uh, Blackbird. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. On December 14th, I attended the Waste Energy presentation at the Aquaterra Landfill. December 14th also, I attended the Youth Council event unveiling their Beyond Faces 2011 Youth Diversity Calendar Project at Tito's. On December 15th, I attended the scores gathering at the Holiday Inn with the rest of the council and the school boards in the college. On December 20th, the Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Association held a short board meeting and a Christmas gathering. And at that meeting, the executive director withdrew her resignation and was accepted back by the board of directors. On December 21st, I attended a multiplex regional resource committee meeting. December 22nd, uh, I attended the Holiday Inn, or the Holiday Open House hosted by MLA Drysdale. And finally, January 6th, I was present when council met with uh, Sue Huff, the acting leader of the Alberta Party. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. On uh, December 20th, I was at a downtown association get together, Christmas get together. As well, I attended the youth calendar, calendar kit off, kicked off at Tito's. Uh, Community Future seems to call on me a few times as secretary. I gotta go in and look at checks, sign them, which I'm finding quite interesting, but there's times they call you in. But I'm really looking forward to the growing the North Conference. Uh, in my heart is the Northwest of Alberta, and I believe we, uh, we hopefully down the road will have a, a lot more proper funding in this area. So I wish everybody had a good Christmas, and I know it's going to be a busy, busy year. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. I see Councillor O'Toole in the, in the queue. Yeah, I just forgot to bring up one. Count Council O'Toole. Yep. Just forgot to bring up one uh, event that I attended. It was in Jan er, ja January 1st, 2011. It was a dog mushing event that was held out at Evergreen Park. And I don't know how many teams were there. I think 24. And they represented people from Quebec all the way, uh, all over Alberta and all over BC. And some people, I think, were from Manitoba as well. A youth involved 
and even there was some uh, uh, elderly people that were participating. So, older than me, actually, Helen. Thank you. And uh, it was an awesome event. The weather turned out great, and everybody that was there enjoyed themselves immensely. Overwhelmed by the the generosity of the of the city, uh, store owners, the hotels, everybody was just to opened them up with open arms, welcomed with open arms. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole, and uh, we really appreciate you attending uh, that event on behalf of Council on uh, what is a holiday day for everybody else. So we really appreciate you making the time to do that. Um, on December 14th, I attended at the Persons with Developmental Disabilities Christmas Open House and uh, from there headed over for the uh, Youth Council's Beyond Faces calendar launch at Tito's. December 15th, I had the pleasure of uh, draw, doing a draw on behalf of Big Brothers. Uh, I was the one who uh, had the pleasure of pulling the ticket out of a hat, uh, which the winner won a uh, trip for two Anywhere WestJet flies. Uh, so that was uh, certainly exciting to do, and congratulations to uh, Sandy Donovan, who was the winner of that. Um, December, s uh, later that evening, I also attended at the SCORES Christmas meeting with our uh, community partners in the school boards and at GPRC. December 17th, I had an Aquaterra board nominating committee meeting, and later that day was here at City Hall for the City Hall staff Christmas potluck. Um, and uh, certainly, you know, these sort of Christmas events are relatively small things maybe in the, in the scheme of things, but it really makes a good working environment and it was a pleasure to see uh, the enjoyment that our staff took in getting together. Uh, I think it speaks volumes about the type of work environment that we have at the City of Grand Prairie and I appreciate that, uh, that we're able to foster that for our staff. I, I should say that our staff foster that amongst themselves because this really is a staff-led event. December 18th, I was, uh, had a walk-on uh, at the dinner theater performance of Rumors. I had big shoes to fill because I understand uh, Councillor Rice had been there uh, doing the same part. Um, Councillor Rice, I didn't hear from the uh, other people in the play, you know, who really was the, the standout actor in that piece, uh, but I think they'd probably say that both of us were you know, okay. Uh, if you talk to them, they, they said we were both fantastic, but... Uh, really stood out. <laughs> Um, but I really appreciated that. It was interesting to note that that was actually the last performance of the Dinner Theatre out at Evergreen Park. They're going to be moving into the city of Grand Prairie and uh, certainly a pleasure to have them in our community no matter where they're located, but we do wish them the best of luck in their new location. December 21st, I was at the Joint City County Council meeting. December 22nd, I was uh, also at uh, MLA Drysdale's open house. And January 6th, I was also in attendance here at City Hall as we met with uh, acting leader of the Alberta Party, Sue Huff. And... Um, I believe over the course of 2010, this council and the previous council met with uh, the leaders of three of the parties uh, that are represented on our provincial scene. And I appreciate the fact that we have an open door policy to any provincial politicians that are in the community that wish to talk about municipal issues or provincial issues. Uh, I believe it really benefits the community that we do that and get the message out about Grand Prairie wherever we can. Um, and that was the last event that I had to report. Thank you very much, everybody. It's been an excellent meeting to start off 2011, uh, even if it didn't start on time. Thank you very much.